I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubble gum. That's former pro wrestler Roddy Rowdy Piper about to tear it up in John Carpenter's They Live. Let's find out why the hot rod wanted so badly to engage in mastication induced arousal. <laughs> People have been mischievously snapping some form of gum since the ancient times. In fact, birch tree tar, an adhesive made by Neanderthals 48,000 years ago, was chewed for its antifungal and antimicrobial agents, perhaps to stave off an infection in the mouth or combat a toothache. In recent history, until World War II, chewing gum was made of chiclet, a latex sap that comes from the sapodilla tree. After World War II, chemists learned how to make artificial gum bases to replace chiclet, ones that are essentially synthetic rubbers with the same temperature profile. So besides enticing you to drop four dollars on a bucket of gum that promises to mask the garlic clove residue on your tongue, what else can this pleasantly flavored synthetic rubber do for you? It may boost your brain power. Yep, all that chewing cud like a cow motion is a catalyst for a neurochemical symphony in your noggin. A 2011 St. Lawrence University study found that chewing gum before a test could warm up the brain, something called mastication-induced arousal. To test this out, 224 undergraduates were divided into three groups. One chewed gum before and during the test, another chewed gum for five minutes before being tested, and a third didn't chew anything. Then a battery of tests were unleashed upon the students. Those who chewed gum five minutes before the exams showed improvements in recall and memory tasks. The idea here is that chewing increases heart rate, blood pressure, and cerebral blood flow. But there are two drawbacks to the study. One is that the window of increased brain power lasted only 15 15 to 20 minutes, and the other is that the effects were pretty much nil if the participant chewed gum the entire time he or she was taking the test. Possibly because the extra brain power it takes to chew gum would decrease the brain's focus. So while gum isn't exactly a performance enhancer when it comes to taking exams, chewing it for a few minutes before a quiz could help your brain get into the test-taking mood. And while there are other benefits to sugarless gum, like fighting tooth decay, we just can't make the claim that chewing gum will make you feel as though a giant cat will whisk you off in a allow you to frolic between its ears. That is just too much. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out these three videos as well. And don't forget to visit us at StuffToBlowYourMind.com. If you've ever been in a city, then you've seen it. Uh, cities are filthy with millions of tiny pieces of gum thrown on the sidewalk and on the road. What happens to that stuff? Does it just stay there forever? Behold, modern chewing gum. But where did it come from? Meet Thomas Adams, born in New York in 1818. Thomas Adams wasn't the first person to make chewing gum. In fact, the practice dates back to the Neolithic period. Well, prior to World War II, chewing gum was actually made of something called chicle, which came from trees which are native to Central America.